Hey gents, today I'm excited to talk about minimalist sneakers. Here are some more. I know I have a lot of videos on channel about these sneakers, but it's one of the most requested topics that you guys have for me out there. Brands bringing out new models all the time, whether we have an existing brand like Wolf and Shepherd, uh, Artisan Lab is one of the most requested brands on the channel, same thing with Jack Shoes, but then also since I did my video a full year ago, we have Taft jumping into it with their shoes, Undandy, uh, Goral is a new one for me. And so what I'm gonna do first is put each of these sneakers into the context of the larger roundup that I did. You I broke that into under 100, 100, 200, and 200 plus for the best minimalist sneakers. And then I'll kind of walk through each of these in their own merits because I mean, I know you guys like to, to see the details on there and detail is basically my middle name with this channel. So I'll put links to all of the brands below so you can check them out. Some of those links are affiliates, they support the channel, but I give, do my best to give you the most objectionable uh, information that I can out there. After all, that is the purpose of my channel. And then we'll talk about these in their greater context. What's interesting too, so none of these are in that first category, which was sub $100, but all of these were either made in Portugal, Italy, or in England. And so all of these are kind of from the European region. And some of them almost looks like they came out of the same factory, which is interesting. But that one to $200 range, just got a lot more competitive. Greats used to basically own that category to me. They had some of the best full grain uppers, they had Margum soles, they had some of the best inner linings, they used the best calfskin for their linings, which really set them apart for comfort. But now that Jack comes in at 160, you have Undandy, Taft in at 190, that sub $200 price point is extremely competitive. I still think Greats, even with their switch away from Margum soles, which I did a video on, I can link that below as well, I still think the inner lining they use for their leather still sets them apart from somebody like a Jack at 160, but if you want a cleaner silhouette, because I know some, some of you guys don't want either the perforations on the toes or the stripe on the side, Jack shoes deliver some incredible value for 160. The sole is a little bit taller than the others. It, it, it's not quite like a platform, but compared to some of the more sleek Margum soles, it just seems a little bit taller, but they do use a shock proof insole, which we'll talk about in a minute is much better than what Wolf and Shepherd went with, and these come in at 225. And so you can see it's just a sleek, low silhouette and profile. Even the stitching on the on the side here, they just use this minimal stitching, which compared to some of the other ones, you'll see like almost like a trainer style. And all they really have as far as like branding goes is just this little tiny thing on the back, uh, very subtle. And they have a few color combinations, but if you want some crazy stuff, Taft, really came through with uh, the, the craziness. They have a, a, a beautiful, you know, low, clean, minimalist sneaker here coming in at 190. And what I like about a brand like Taft or even Undandy is that they have that fully, you know, you can do free returns, free shipping. And some of the brands like that I ran into a problem with where they are still at that about $200 price point, whether it was Svensson or uh, Artisan Lab, is that the, the shipping, for me in the US at least, made those shoes not as good of a value on me because like with Artisan Lab, I had to pay 30 extra dollars to get shipping for me. And so Artisan Lab and Svensson are really good options for my European friends and some of the guys outside of the States. But for in the States, somebody like M Gemini is actually one of the better options because you have the Margum Sole, made in Italy, great leather upper, really clean silhouette, slightly taller in the back, the heel is slightly taller, but the M Gemini is coming in at 228 with all those features, make this a really good shoe. You can see I got some good wear and tear on those already. And so, you know, the, wrapping up the sub $200 range, you've got some great options in here. I'll definitely check those out. And somebody like on Dandy, you can fully customize these to the, the color of the sole, the color of the upper, you can change some of the stuff around and the sizing can be a little more custom as well. None of these companies have the wide sizes, unfortunately. I think still one of the only ones is Crown in Northampton. And so you can check out Crown if you, if you do need those wider sizes. You guys ask me, I'm looking for them. Uh, if you do know a sneaker brand, let me know down below because I'm always looking to find somebody that offers wide sizes, not just kind of the standard or the narrow. And then you have the two to $300 price point where these are some amazing shoes. And this is where you're definitely getting common projects quality, but not quite at the markup prices. I know, sales, everything else. But that's where you do have Crown, as I talked about in my last video. Koyo makes some of the best stuff out there. Artisan Lab comes in and these, yes, 
it's, I understand why they were so heavily requested. They do hit the silhouette, the margam soles. I think the leather upper and the inner lining are good, but I can tell that it is a two, it's, I think it's 204 before shipping for me. It was, it was 235 with shipping outside of, of Europe for me. But I can see this is a $200 shoe just because it's like the, the leather is not as nice as the Koyo. I always come back to Koyo because they use some of the best calfskin uh, that I've seen on any of these sneakers. And Artisan Lab like makes a great shoe, great silhouette. They also have a ton of combinations of uppers and soles, which I really like. And so Artisan Lab, I think is excellent for anybody outside of the States. Inside of the States, you get a lot more options that will include free shipping returns and all that stuff and will end up being better values, but a great shoe. Then you have, uh, I did talk about MGMI 228. This is like right before you get into the excellent stuff of Koyo, which is, I think they raised their price, so another 275. Uh, MGMI, great. And then Wolf and Shepherd. And Wolf and Shepherd was probably the third most requested out of this. It was Jack, it was basically like Jack Artisan Lab, Jack Artisan Lab, and then Wolf and Shepherd. And it's because they are known for their comfort dress shoes and they advertise their sneakers as being just as comfortable. And these have had the most wear this summer because when I first put them on, I was like, this is pretty interesting because you have a, you do have a extremely cushioned heel in here. And you, I actually, when you pull this out, you can see how they're doing it, which is like just a styrofoam on the back here and something similar to what they had in their dress shoes. And these are made in Portugal, they're 225, so they're up in that next price tier and they do have a very clean silhouette. However, I think you can basically get the same silhouette made in Portugal, could come from the same factory because they both have non-Margum soles in the Jacks at 160. But what I had with the Wolf and Shepherd shoes is all of this cushion ended up being too much cushioned to where as I was walking, I would hear so I'd hear the air coming out of the shoe. I also had an issue where when I would wear it frequently, I would end up, because there's so much give and cushion in the shoe, my heel would, the top of my heel would rub up against the back of the shoe, which is not ideal because if I would wear this for an eight or nine hour day, then I would really feel that at the end of the day. And I know that the heel thing with the Wolf and Shepherd is not a sizing issue because all of these shoes fit nearly identically. They basically all use the same like Margum sizing, so they fit like dress shoes. You know, the greats, I'm a 12 in the MGMI, and the Jack, and the Artisan Labs. And same thing with Wolf and Shepherd. I'm wearing the same size in the Wolf and Shepherd as I do in their dress shoes. Everything fits about it well. It's just how much give there is in the sole that is giving me some of the heel rub. This is like even up into the next tier. These come in at about 3.30 with exchange and shipping and things. And this is Goral shoes. Now Goral reminds me a lot of Crown. They're a very, uh, they're a heritage English manufacturer of sneakers. And they don't necessarily have one of these like super clean minimalist silhouettes, but they have their own style on these. And they use a bovine leather, which is extremely durable and does really well with just like minimal creasing the way this wears. And, and they have a little bit of unique silhouettes. You can see those on their website. This one has a little more suede on it. So it's just a cool look. But Goral Shoes comes from that DNA of English shoemakers and just has some really interesting takes on the sneaker silhouette. They use a really durable 70 Shore A rubber, which is what I had in my Oliver Cabell shoes that I really liked. And just something a little bit different. So if you want that kind of minimalist, if you want that silhouette, but you want something a little bit different within there, that's what one of the things that I like about like Greats or Koyo is they have this kind of style, but they have some unique detailing in there, which kind of sets them apart. So that's Goral shoes out of the UK uh, coming in at 3.30. And I think, you know, this is a great example of a shoe you can buy once and just have for a very long time. So that'll do it for what I'm calling the sneaker supplement. Happy to answer any questions below. Each of these shoes have had at least 10 hours or, or 20 hours of wear time, uh, especially the Wolf and Shepherd and some of the ones that were particularly more requested. We're just so spoiled with like great options for minimalist shoes and footwear where you're getting very high quality stuff but not at the prices they used to be. And so I can see why I get so many questions about them. So especially to all my regulars that check in on all these videos, thank you for your patience this summer. Uh, we had a baby, I did the Alan Edmonds series. It's just been a lot of chaos. Who knew that a third child would be so disruptive in daily life? Uh, but I, I, it did give me extra time to wear each of these sneakers. So I got a lot of fun stuff coming up in the month of September. And I really appreciate you guys sticking with me as I uh, kind of had like a rocky, a very unplanned summer. Uh, well, it was planned to have the baby, but it was unplanned all the, the chaos that ensued. And so, 
As always, I'll be down in the comments. I really appreciate you guys checking in. I'll be over on Instagram as well, at the underscore Cavalier, and Twitter, but nobody really checks in with me on Twitter. It's all about Instagram these days. And so, love to hear from you guys over there. Until next time, gents, this is the Cavalier. Mm -hmm.